OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. So welcome, my name is Jennifer Gallardi. I'm talking about taking up your citizenship class. Basically it's citizenship press prepped on the go. Uh, my name is Jennifer Gallardi. I am an OTAN subject matter expert. I've taught citizenship for over 20 years at Milpitas Unified, uh, or Milpitas Adult School. Uh, I also do um, the website, podcast and video series from uscitizenpod.com. And um, I was written two citizenship books recently, Citizenship for Dummies, yay, second edition. And now I am um, a moderator for the new uh, forum on at links.ed.gov for civics education and citizenship prep. And I would, re would really like to extend an invitation to you to join links and to get involved in our discussions. So let's get started. So um, by the way, uh, the president want to pop in and say hello. So hi, Joe. Um, I know he's busy this week. And this is our objectives. We will identify the latest citizenship resources with mobile apps, videos, websites, and online courses. By adapting and incorporating these digital resources, participants will be able to implement learning strategies appropriate for citizenship online classes blended learning classes, distance learning environments, or self or directed self-study. I wanted to address, address the latest news about the USCIS naturalization test redesign. Uh, they do have a website. Um, not too much is on there yet, but we will pop over there. We will talk. Um, they we will talk about. Uh, they're going to have a trial test over the next five months in uh, 2023, 2023. They're basically testing two key components. Number one, they're going to do a, a multiple choice civics test. It's going to have four choices: no, none of the above, or A and B, or um, none of them are correct. Those kind of things. Also, they're going to do a standardized picture-based speaking test. Uh, the topics will include uh, uh, they will include daily routines, weather, food, shopping, school, and the tests are similar to the picture-based tests from Best Plus 2.0 or the TOEIC Bridge. And the prompts will basically be: Tell me about this picture. And they're going to be scored based on relevant, relevant content and phrases. So let me move forward just a little bit more about this, and then we'll go to the website. Uh, first of all, does anybody have any questions about the initial, the initial information? Are we okay to move ahead? Okay. Um, Community based uh, organizations will be provided with a full bank of multiple choice te civics test questions, correct answers, and educational resources, and, uh, including the picture pr uh, prompts. Also, a technical advisory uh, group, a tag, will be selected by the contractor. USCIS has not named the contractor yet. Previously, they had used TESOL as uh, the people to organize the tag group. Uh, we'll have to wait to see who they do uh, pick for the tag group. Tag group will consist of 10 subject matter experts, five adult ESL second acquisition or assessment, uh, experts in assessment design in US, uh, and then five US government civics, American history and assessment design uh, experts. The tag will review and recommend language level, uh, language levels, scoring rubrics, and uh, educational resources. And nonprofits and adult ed programs can volunteer uh, at, uh, at Naturalization Redesign 22 at USCIS uh, uh, DHS.gov. So I just want to take a minute to address you. I was a part of one of the tag uh, committees uh earlier um 
one of the things that um, the our results were inconclusive, um, but I really have to say USCIS brought their absolute A game to uh, to the process, as well as the people from TESOL, World Ed, and the participants uh, from San Diego to Seattle, all the way to the East Coast. Everybody brought their A game, very serious doing the work and everything like that. So I would feel in complete confidence with the um, what the tag does and how they review and the care and expertise that they bring. So let me continue on. Oh, let me take this opportunity now to actually go to, um, I want to go to uh, USCIS where they had that website that, uh, um, the 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 uh, 22 or they have they're talking about the redesign so you go to uscis.gov you go to citizenship you're going to the place about um i think it's i think it might be here naturalization yes naturalization under naturalization test and study resources natural test redesign. This is where they're going to put the information. However, what they do, they basically have this, they said that this is the federal register. This is where we announced the plans. They basically in when the federal registration notice talks about some of the laws that the, the uh, new um, or why they need to do the redesign and some of the laws that they take into consideration. There was a presentation on January tw uh, 12th. Yesterday, they had a virtual engagement. I don't know if they put up the test yet. No, this is just simply the, um, this is simply the page where they, they uh, invited people to uh, participate. And later, they're going to be sharing the information or the slide deck from this presentation on, um, on March, uh, March the 3rd. So, we're waiting for that to come up. Um, and as soon as it does, we'll be sharing that information with you. Let me go back, step back into my presentation for a minute. Does anybody have any further questions here? Yep. Okay. Um, this is the initial, I have uh, two initial responses to the naturalization test development. Uh, we have an article from Lynn Weintraub from Citizenship News. She posted it January the 13th. She talked about more details on the test uh, redesign. It was fairly positive. Um, and then on, I believe it was March the 2nd, Bill Bliss uh, posted uh, his response uh, was really in, really dug into the, um, the standards that they were talking about during the test. Uh, has some really interesting critique. So if you take take a look at both of these uh, these um, articles, judge the the information. But we really can't make a decision about this information until we actually see the uh, the pilot itself. Also, I want to do a, a little bit of advertising for links. So this is um, let's see. I need to reshare. Share. So this is links.ed.gov. We've recently started a new forum for civics education and citizenship. I posted Lynn Weintraub's article there. We have a really good response from Mary Jen Ritter, uh, uh, affirming some of the findings uh, or conclusions uh, by um, uh, by Lynn Weintraub. And then yesterday, or the yeah, or the day before, I posted uh, uh, Bill Bliss's article, and then the invitation. I will post the 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 rest of the um, the slide deck there from the USCIS as well as any, as any further discussion. So please t uh, stay tuned for that. While we're here at Lynx, I would like to invite you to join the Lynx community. We have a very vibrant community, uh, especially with language acquisition, uh, 
we have uh, two new forums, civics education and also diversity and equity and inclusion. Uh, one of the, my favorite <laughs> forums is math and numeracy and I hate math and numeracy, but I know, I know I hated math when I was going to school. However, as I became an adult, I realized that math is really, really important and touches every aspect of your li personal and professional life. So um, let's see, is Peg here? Can she talk about, can you talk about this, your upcoming woman arm? Thanks, Jennifer. So yeah. again, if, for anyone who wasn't in our last session with Jennifer, um, Math and Numeracy Strand of Links is sponsoring um, April 17th and 18th in a two-day online discussion around financial literacy in all aspects of adult education. So my co-facilitator, Brooke Istis, and I would greatly appreciate anyone's attendance, stopping in, post a couple comments, few sentences, be supportive, um, and thank you in advance. I mean, it's a great opportunity, and Links, Links is a wonderful forum, Jennifer, um, just for sharing and staying up to date. Yeah, especially if you, um, well, for a couple of reasons. Number one, everything that they talk about on Links can immediately be a shared uh, shared in your your program and if it's shared in your program then and it implemented it could be uh, basically applied in your classroom second thing is just that it is an initiative by octa which is from the department of education or the u.s department of education talking about uh implementing that's the group that basically implements a weoa and ie c ie CLE. -E. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, um, uh, initiatives. They're very much interested in immigrant Im uh, immigrant education or immigrant. Uh, sorry, immigrant integration, and they're very very serious about research based um, practices. So basically, you research it. You 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 basically apply it, you bring the information back. So you basically have some really solid information to share with your programs, to report out to the government or any uh, financial institution. So I really, really appreciate links and they have uh, seem to have a really good collaboration going on with uh, COAPE, um, which is our uh, coalition for adult, uh, for adult education educators as well. So I will refer to them in a couple of minutes. So I'm going to go back into my presentation and continue on. Um, so let's see. Okay, so that was uh, the naturalization. That's the initial response to the naturalization um, redesign. So we're looking forward to seeing what will happen there. I'm going to talk about delivering content. And I have so many students that are like, oh, teacher, I want to learn citizenship. I can't come to class. So uh, what do you do? So I started my, my podcast uh, in 2007 and then developed a website and videos a lot to go along with it to basically enable students to uh, practice citizenship outside the classroom because the citizenship test actually happens outside the classroom. So that's going to be really, really important. And it's not that the students don't want to come to class, but they can't come to class because they have adult responsibilities. A lot of our uh, issues at Milpita seems to, to revolve around uh, daycare. Uh, students have to do overtime or students have to are transferred to the swing shift. So sometimes they have rotating sit shifts, so they can't go. So that's been a problem in the past. So, but now one of the problems we've also had on the other side or the program side is that we're having a def really difficult time finding qualified adult education teachers in uh, California, particularly in the Bay Area. So um, I had to, what I did was I forego, or basically said, um, well, we couldn't find so, some teachers for the evening. So I said, look, my citizenship, my citizenship class or course works online. 
let me take teach an ESL course morning and night so that'll basically give us some some room or some uh, flexibility for our ESL program. I'll take my citizenship, uh, I'll keep my citizenship class online. So one of the advantages is, is that the students really like one-on-one -on -one practice. So every week I do practice with them. But one of the more difficult things is, is that they have to basically work through civics and naturalization content on their own. Now, fortunately, I can deliver that through USA Learns or, uh, or to supplement USA Learns. I've had developed a series of videos and scripts and everything like that. So every day they have something new to, uh, to look at. Uh, I basically, um, so they have the video scripts, we have the videos, we have USA Learns. I also supplement content with from VOA News. I have uh, developed a lot of quizzes. And uh, again, we do that one-on-one -on -one mock citizenship interview. What's keeping us honest is the, the uh, cost of citizenship assessments. So we have do a life work pre and post test. We do the government and history listening test, and we do the CIT speaking test. I really appreciate that CIT speaking test. It's a really good indicator to see if the student is ready for the actual um, N-400 part of the, N, um, the, 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 the citizenship interview. Uh, it was based on the pre-2014 uh, N-400. Uh, they do have to define some of the um, the Part 12 information, and they also have to practice how to deal with interruptions or colloquial language. So it's a really, really interesting uh, interview, and the students really seem to enjoy it. I want to stop just a second and um, stop just a second and show this. So I'm going to do a new share. And this is my website. So today I put up my presentation and every day I have a lesson. Uh, usually it's a practice interview that I've done with a student. I have different parts of the N-400 that they can look at. Uh, and the N-400, a lot of times I've matched it with what's happening with USA Learns. We always have cin civics content so they can access PDFs from uh, either USCIS or here I have uh, an executive branch bridge. Um, oop, sorry, no thanks. So uh, something from the executive branch. So anyway, I've done a lot of supplementing and development of different quiz, uh, of things for my students to use. One thing that I do want to share is also um, that it is International Women's Month. So uh, I always try to put up some information uh, from our uh, different uh, different government and educational resources related to the women's group. And on the bottom, I have different resources that I myself have developed strictly about citizenship. Uh, so we have, say, for instance, let's see. Uh, hopefully, this will work. A quiz about. Uh, women's history. So uh, comparing the Seneca Falls Convention to uh, the convention, uh, what did the Declaration of Independence do? So again, any way that I can use uh, match up history or politics um, with our uh, citizenship uh, quizzes I, uh, I, uh, or content, I really, really try to make an effort to do that. Um, so do, can anybody talk about how they are uh, they're teaching their citizenship class now? Patricia, you want to say something? You know, mine's in person. Most I, I <laughs> most of my students are not real savvy uh, technologically. Uh, I got them to do cahoots. <laughs> I've worked I've been working really hard to get them to do Burlington English because our school pays for every student to be there, but uh, but they're coming along. You know, I, I have people who fall asleep in class. So I certainly make us walk around, move around, not because I'm boring, of course, but because they've started work at two or three in the morning and now it's, you know, 
two in the afternoon and they're tired. So, you know, you got to yeah. walk it around. One of the reasons why, so I'm resharing uh, the PDFs. One of the things that I really wanted to do, speaking of walking around, is if you give them long things to practice, they will fall asleep. So what I did was I developed a series of shorter practices. So uh, in different levels of those shorter practices. So for instance, here's one that's A4, that's only 10, 10 questions long. They keep on, uh, so through a series that they go through, they're going to add, ask and develop more and more questions, more and more expertise about what's happening with the N400. But again, once again, these are short interviews because you want everybody to have a turn and everybody wants to practice with the teacher. But a lot of times they're going to learn a lot more. It's going to really build up that community if you're doing short practices together. So one side is an N400 practice. The other side is a civics practice. So, um, okay, let's continue on and let's go back to the, um, the um, slideshow. And I am not in the right place in the slideshow. Okay, wait a second. Wrong, the wrong one? Hmm. Okay, there it is. Okay, so that's how I that's how I deliver content in my classroom. Uh, one of the first things that I do on the very first times that when we meet uh, or get together, I uh, basically have uh, a page where they talk about getting uh, list a simple list of local immigration legal services. And most of these are pro bono, but a lot of times we have to remember as teachers, that we are not lawyers, that we can teach them the English and we can uh, give them advice about how to conduct themselves during an interview. But when it comes to legal advice, we really need to basically defer to some of the, the local organizations. So uh, it's really good to have a five. If you give them more than that, it's gonna be get to be a little bit difficult. But we find language appropriate uh, places that they can go to for further legal help. Um, and every or uh, every locality will have different organizations that can help them. I also in the one of the very early classes that I have with my students, whether it was in person or online, we do a USCIS uh, government virtual tour. We watch the the videos about how to apply for citizenship online. So even if they do it on paper, at least they know about the alter, uh, the option about applying online. It basically, again, familiarizes them with the, the form and the way USCIS does their, uh, their process. Also, USCIS released about three weeks ago some new naturalization how-to videos very short very videos very clear very accessible so that's up on their youtube website i always uh, show my students the the tools page and that's really important because the one of the first i've gotten texts from my students in the middle of my about when is my what's the step my case status or what's the processing time or how do I know if I'm eligible to apply, et cetera, et cetera. So showing them the tool page, and you might have to show them again, but showing it to them earlier, again, basically helps them their own personal civics education. And I do recommend the USCIS Citizenship Resource Center because I'm gonna say, hey, um, these are the interview topics. So they've developed a series Oh, I'm sorry, I have to share this again. Sorry, one minute. Jennifer, we, I think we we just, uh, yeah, I think I just lost it. Sorry. sorry. Hey, Jennifer, we've got a question in the chat. It Please says, go ahead. Can you give us a tour of the tools page? Sure. Uh, let me show you this one for the new uh, N400. Uh, okay. So this is the civics test resources and notice that they have things not only for the N400, but they start putting in stuff about uh, the um, part uh, eight, uh, I mean, part 12, here's some civics resources, reading resources, et cetera, et cetera. 
Now we're up here at the tools page. Um, I click the online tools. They have a really good, USCIS has a re, uh, really good uh, video about logging on or creating an online account. The ones that I really, and I re, return to this page again and again, but the two or three that I always go through. A lot of times the big question is, is like, how long is it going to take me to become a, uh, to go through the process? So for instance, I show them, well, what form are we going to apply with? And they're like, I don't know, all of them. And it's like, no, you don't apply with them, all of them. You're going to use the N-400 application for naturalization. That's the appropriate title of the form category. And you're going to pick your local USCIS office. I'm up in San Francisco. Uh, Patricia, I forget where you are. Los Angeles. La, you do the Los Angeles one? Mm -hmm. There's Los Angeles and there's Los Angeles County, which I believe is out in San Bernardino. Is that yeah, correct? No, we're, we're Los Angeles because we're no. yeah. Okay. Uh, but so in Los, Ange Los Angeles, it's going to take them approximately 16.5 months, but I understand that it's going much faster now. Is that correct? Yeah, I was going to say I had, uh, I've already had two students, one applied in uh, uh, August and she was interviewed in January. Mm -hmm. And the other one applied, I think in June and he was up, he was uh, interviewed like in December. No. So, so it's, it's, it's interesting. And I've had yeah. people apply like, later than last year so it's been over a year and a half so it's just like there's a weird bottleneck happening somewhere well and i don't could understand be, it could be that their application got stuck remember how they yes. were housing them i would guess that that's more than likely is that yeah it got so, in a place where they had to go and find it you know it was inaccessible for a while that's all i think this gets back to uh what it used to be is students used to apply and then they would learn English, okay? Then they would study the citizenship. It's like, no, we really want you kind of ready to go. Um, we want you to have your, you, we want you to have a good English level. We want you to basically be able to get to a, through a basic personal information level. Yeah, we can work on the, the, um, the uh, part 12 vocabulary later, but we want to know that you have the skills to, uh, basically read the civics content and not simply just try to muscle memory your way through the 100 questions, okay? Jennifer, normally yes, I, I have a section, uh, like at the very beginning where we go through the steps and I always put study as step number one. I mean, I have people who come in after they've already done their application, but I always, ev everybody else, step one is to study, step two then when you're ready is to do the application. You know, I work it that way. Okay, so we have a, this very first one was case, uh, case processing time. I show them the fees calculator, and there is a there is information in there about um, no, sorry, uh, information has recently come out that the fees will be going up uh, about thirty five dollars for the N four hundred, but all the fees are going to be changing at USCIS and the case status online. And the case status online is important because they're, to use this one, they're gonna only already have to receive their receipt number from their application. And this is gonna be important too, because perhaps they might have, oh, it's down here. Perhaps they're, they're, uh, they've been waiting a little bit longer, so they might have to submit a case inquiry. And I do eventually go through all of these. I do go through all the tools, but the big three are case processing times, fee calculator, case status online, and I'm sorry, I forgot about one. It's like, am I eligible? So that's the eligibility one down here. I see there's a there's a question in chat. I'm going to click this. Oh, that was from the. Okay, great. Uh, did anybody else have any questions about USCIS.gov while I'm still here? Let's see in the chat. Okay, thank. Oh, thank you. All right, very cool. Okay, um, new share. I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint. Um, I want to talk, these are available at uscis.gov uh, uh, under the Citizenship uh, Center. They have the N-400, uh, sorry, 
they have the uh, civics lessons, of course, and um, uh, basically beginning and then intermediate level. Uh, but they've also started developing more in 400 lesson plans. Uh, they did one on the Oath of Allegiance that was really, really helpful. They also did one on military service. Um, again, no matter how much content people put out there, the uh, USCIS puts out that they all people want more and more and more. Uh, so one of the things they came up with is um, a more perfect union. It's it's um, an alternative. It, it's a really good, interesting marriage between the beginning level and the intermediate level uh, uh, language level. But it's basically the guides to all the monu or different monuments and memorials on the National Mall. So it's been very, very interesting. So they'll have some really nice pictures. Like this is the picture of the um, the um, people who signed the Declaration of Independence, uh, which is really kind of poignant. It's not it's beautiful, but it's it's not the most. It, it's like these these big granite boulders right here. There, they have like the signatures of the uh, people who signed the Declaration of Independence etched in the stone. It's kind of moving. And then they have uh, the civics questions related to the monument. So taking a look at there and just basically kind of remixing and matching the information and applying it to places that the students may have actually visited is really important. And then sometimes I grab uh, videos from um, the National Park Service or so, uh, show them some of the websites. So anything I, that I can do to bring out in outside applicable information to my students, I really, really try to do that. And it, it does pique their interest and it basically opens them up to more than like, I'm just gonna memorize this stuff and then forget it as soon as I leave. So good job. Oh, they're considering doing a series uh, like this for New York City. And I also suggested maybe they move into the Midwest, maybe um, St. Louis or even Chicago um, to um, basically extend um, uh, into the heartland of the United States. I wanna talk about um, a initiative or a collaboration between USCIS and the Smithsonian. It's called Preparing the Oath. And um, they do one question and one video from uh, for every one of the civics qu uh, questions. And they have some beautiful, so the students are watching the videos that are very short, one to three minutes max. They're seeing beautiful objects of, from history from the Smithsonian collections. There's usually a, a, a very simple quiz and there might be an activity about matching or pairing. So um, they have the ability to do download the transcripts and I've used those transcripts. I've modified them and used them as listening, uh, lis listening practice or uh, uh, dictation. And uh, they also have a really good word list. So again, they did an excellent job for preparing the oath. Now that the videos that they have here are not on YouTube, but that's okay. There's there's other things there, but this is very. I really really appreciate this uh, this initiative. I wanted to take a second now that I've gone through the USCIS stuff and basically ask: um, Does anybody, you know, does anybody have any want to share any lessons learned from? adapting during the 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 pandemic and readapting so um or does anybody want to share any best practices from uh from their their own classroom or program okay let's see we have a hand up peg did you want to say something thanks jennifer um, at my programs in Trenton, um, coming back from, you know, the pandemic and everything, what did we learn from the pandemic was, you know, having everything remote, it kind of in some ways made student collaboration easier. Really? Wow. Um, only because 
during, you know, during the complete lockdown, that was a way for students to stay engaged with live individuals, so to speak. Um, and they started to make YouTube videos, the department set up a, a YouTube channel, right, when we went on remote, um, and they made videos about everything. What do they hoard during COVID? Uh, what were their fears during I COVID? Need to see Safety of COVID, all yeah. of this. Thoughts about vaccinations, everything. But the way that that has carried forward now that we're back in person is the teachers are, are really truly doing computer assisted instruction now. Um, and to the extent where our, especially our advanced classes, they, they go into small groups live and they maybe have a debate topic or, or something like that. They go in groups, they you know present a side or they break up in their group, one half presents something, the other half does another. And then they're they're more um, eager or less reluctant, I should say, um, to stand up and actually present in front of the whole class. Um, and we've also, I know I just talked to my advanced teacher yesterday and she said her students are now doing a project um, and it's singular, each student is working individually, um, choosing a president from their country and a president from the United oh, States, someone who has been in office at the same time. Wow. So not necessarily Biden, not necessarily Trump, not necessarily Obama, but somebody, you know, for whatever. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, it, and it can be very far back. We, we have a student from the Ivory Coast, for example, um, who chose uh, someone who was president of the Ivory Coast, at, who was president of the Ivory Coast at the same time as Bill Clinton was president of the United States. So compare and contrast these two individuals. And in her presentation, she explained that that president from the Ivory Coast was her grandfather. <gasps> Wow. Oh, I you know, there's there's a lot a of rich that. sharing that comes about. So it's like kind of like seven, seven degrees of separation. Like I know a student whose grandfather was a president, you know, and now it's just coming down. Um, but the students are really even more interested in listening to one another, whether it's sharing something about their country or sharing something about debates. It's it's really Transitioning back to in-person is now different than it would have been if we had never gone online in the first place. It's it's not better or worse. It's just different. And as the director, I see a rich fabric, but it's a different type of fabric than it would have been without COVID. Just different. That's amazing. That is such a good story. Wow. Uh, do you have it? Do you have the link to your YouTube channel so we can see some of it, or um, is most of the stuff? Let me let me find it and yeah. I'll put it in the chat. Absolutely, that's great. Okay, um, let me go back. Patricia, you want to? Did you want to say anything? No. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, further. Um, I uh, one of the, some of the lessons that I learned uh, was that um, every form is an opportunity. So, um, so one of the the um, initial questions that citizenship students have is, "What is the AUS CIS N four hundred? And then, um, how can I practice for my citizenship every day? So, I really talk a lot in my classroom about comparing forms like the documents or um, the forms or the documents and encounters with their doctor or with um, um, your, for, com they're comparing the forms, the documents and their encounters with the USCIS N-400 interview experience. Um, so um, also we're talking about a wallet interview. So we've I've basically I've opened my wallet and basically demonstrate like, this is where my name is. This is where I would find my information. Here's my green card. This is where I would find uh, my date of permanent residence. Uh, I 
carry this credit card so I can get points to go, go travel and then th those kind of things. So using the information in a wallet, basically and walk your way through almost a mock interview. Medical history forms and auto for, uh, fill forms are um, for shopping is a way to practice addresses. Job applications and interview are what some of those gatekeeping, um, those gatekeeping experiences that basically uh, prepares a person emotionally for the interview. And again, airline tickets and destinations, again, talking about that. Oh, let's see, did you put that in there? Let's see. Uh, somebody just wanted to say, oh, okay, so there, there's the information from PEG and we have more on Google Classroom and Moodle too. Yeah, it's really it's important to maintain student privacy, but thank you very much. I'm gonna definitely check that out. You're welcome. There's a video on there, Jennifer. Somebody's talking, some class did talking about their pets and someone has Bathsheba the bunny. I mean, that's like the best video of all time. Oh uh, yeah, okay. Well, later on, maybe I'll get my cat to come on online and um, <laughs> present present her case. I used to, I used to have um, house rabbits for a long time, um, but and I got house rabbits because I thought, oh, they won't damage my property. They won't damage the house. <laughs> so not right. Okay, so let me go back. Um, so forms. That was one vid, uh, One of those takeaways from the from COVID. Social media. Um, one of these things about promising to tell the truth, and is linked with um, the the. Um, uh, the promise that you make at, uh, during the citizenship interview, do you promise everything that you said it true? Well, if you follow social media, you know that everything on social media is not necessarily true. Mm -hmm. So um, just from a cursory follow of social media. But, um, and I also want to, to, to stress that um, some of our government agencies are making a real effort to post information uh, to get out the truth about what is ha happening on their websites, et cetera. So I, instead of me telling the students, this is what's happening, a lot of times that I'll assign the students like, okay, you follow USCIS.es, you follow TSA, you follow Ro Khanna, our congressman, et cetera, et cetera. And they would report back in class what happened this week. And so that was really interesting to get them to learn how to use uh, social media as a tool for uh, civic engagement. Um, and um, I really appreciate the Voice of Learning English News Literacy Series, which uh, was a very um, uh, initiative, I think came out five years ago about talking about news literacy and iCivics has a really good liter news literacy um, uh, uh, activity. Scavenger hunts on portals and activities. I cannot tell you how many times I've answered this question. How many, you know, who is my senator? Who is my representative? Or where do I get my arrest record? So I basically have introduced my students like, okay, here's the, how do you find out information about Milpitas, you know, Milpitas uh, Police Department? So they Google that. And then they start drooling through, down through it. So I don't tell them just randomly to do it. Basically, they're sitting up at the front of the classroom and we're helping the students talk their way through this, how to find different information. It's been very empowering for them. However, state of California has a massive portal. And so it's sometimes it's really difficult to find that information for your city or your county, et cetera, et cetera. So you really need to initially start holding people's hands so they can walk through this. So, and there's a real feeling of accomplishment when they're able to find the information that's really necessary for them. So I would recommend uh, basically scavenger hunt, app, uh, hunt activities on portals and apps. I want to dig a little bit deeper into the part 12 stuff and USA Learns um, has gotten beyond just giving simple definitions, but they give uh, some really good examples of uh, life stories that the students can uh, learn from. So this is a quick one about somebody who engaged in legal activities 
uh, they've done their time, they've paid their fine, can they still become citizens? One of the problems, yes, please go ahead with the chat. Let's see. I have a five minute warning. Oh, cannot believe it. I can talk forever about this stuff. Okay. I'm going to have to step away from USA Learns. I have uh, two uh, things that people are talking about from Lynn Weitrop and Bill Bliss about uh, the N400 part 12. I have some further information here about 12 uh, part 12 resources uh, that they can dig into. I have a video playlist and I'm really was really surprised by uh, two of these. One is this is a teacher down from I guess uh, 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 Los Angeles Adult School who's done some very interesting things with citizenship and then also literacy. Pr Pittsburgh has done some really outstanding information. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about the mock citizenship interviews that I give. Uh, I always use a progressive series of mock citizenship interviews. Uh, I upload the videos to Google Drive or YouTube. I set them to, um, not to private because then only I could see them. I set them to um, no, uh, not listed and so or unlisted. And so then the students can uh, watch them uh, as many times as they want. I send the, the, the link to the students an email with uh, one to three reflection questions about how they could have responded better or is there another way to practice rephrasing. And um, I delete all the videos to protect their privacy after the students take the oath of allegiance. Um, I just recently developed a mix and match uh, 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 series E and I basically uh, emphasized the the part 12 information with uh, civics quizzes. So here's one that I practice between residency and voting. And the reason why is because there's always a link between residency and voting. And the student, after they go through this, they have to tell me what is the relationship between residency and voting because they also answer a quiz. This is the final slide. And I have a padlet of all sorts of a lot more resources. Uh, let me click this here. So, um, stop share. And you can see the resources here. I also have them up here on the Padlet. So I have a lot, and which is going to think about loading. So I have something here that I'm going to try to develop for C. Uh, COEB has a state convention in California uh, in April. Uh, this year, it's going to be in Oakland. And one of the things is I have a civics calendar that um, I have a whole bunch of adult resources related to different holidays. I'm going to try to beat this out into a uh, Google, uh, a shareable Google calendar so people can have uh, that civics information for them at the fingertips and activities. I have uh, information about the test redesign and the new uh, citizenship uh, videos and um, all sorts of things about voting, online courses, especially the ones that came up about the Constitution Explained and civics and news literacy and um, faith-based immigration and citizenship resources. And that's it. Let's stop and let's get to the tech slam, okay? Does anybody have any questions? Do we, we go to 210 or we, we're done? Yeah, we, we have till 210. Oh, well, we do have to 210. Oh, I didn't have to rush through those slides. But does anybody have any questions before we go on? Patricia, did you have anything you wanted to say? I had a student who called me on Thursday mm -hmm. because she has her interview scheduled in next week and her father is gravely ill. And initially she said, I wasn't gonna go, but she said, you know, my head isn't here. I can't really study because I'm just thinking about him. And I said, mm -hmm. anyway, um, she asked me what to do. And um, in her case, she had an attorney and it occurred to me, you could talk to your attorney. And in fact, he, he rose to the occasion. He said, you just get your plane ticket, let me know, and I will take care of that. So, you know, for the rest of us, 
it's a lot more involved, I think, to, you know, to change somebody's interview. It's very difficult, but. Yeah, I, it, it's interesting because I was wondering if she had gone through like a legal services, um, a oh. pro bono legal services, like oh. Catholic charities or something like that. Oh. She might still be on hold. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> yes, you're so right. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's Lent. We're all fasting. Okay. <laughs> we're Lent. We're fasting. We're hungry. We'll get to oh, you. That's for why. Okay. Yeah. Is that what? Yeah. Except that um, Lent goes all year round for some of those places. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the, the pro, but the thing is, is that those pro, um, those pro bono uh, legal services are absolutely essential to, for so many of our yeah. um for so many of our uh, students too well and uh, you know i was looking around i had some it's interesting i have a group of students i have two classes but i have a group of students who have a lot more legal problems than students i have had in the past and when i hear them talk i'm going Woo! and i had anyway um i went to the new americas i was going through Cadiz, and i was going through and i wasn't getting anywhere you're just on hold or Leave mm -hmm. New America's a great yeah. But um, with the New America's project, um, we're going to put together, we actually have a citizenship uh, workshop, and they gave my students first bid to sign up uh, because they're going to have legal people on staff. And the other thing that they always do is they have the paperwork there for p either a fee reduction or, you know, for people who, because I have several people who are on Social Security who probably qualify for no fee at all, you know, but you have to do paperwork for that. So anyway, um, that's the most positive thing is that we're going to do this. They put it on a Saturday. It's the last Saturday of March. So I think there's there's another thing. I happen to know that you teach in a library and I used to um, I used to be a coordinator for the library, the citizenship program at the library at our local library system. And that is an unbreakable bond between uh, or unbreakable triad between the libraries, adult schools and legal services. If they can maybe basically host uh, services at the library, you got the legal services people there, you got the adult ed people who can pro provide maybe deeper la language instruction i think that's a really really good pairing so um i can't recommend that enough um you were speaking of new americans and for a while i was confusing the new americans with the welcome the welcome um dot us group that is basically part of the new white house initiative to oh, no. welcoming yeah. the refugees and new immigrants to the united states mm -hmm. and i know that octa and uh, of course on links we're going to be discussing some of the the immigrant integration because a lot of those people who are especially coming some of the refugees coming in now have really high levels of education but how do they basically get the uh get their um licenses and degrees translated um yeah. so that's going to be really really important too um and so um one of the questions that i had especially with the new uh redesign is that i was wondering if they're offloading some of this basic naturalization work onto the community-based organizations to allow USCIS to have more space to work with the immigrants, the immigrant uh, population um, that's coming through because a lot of that stuff is really, really problematic. Whereas when you're getting into naturalization, it might be a little bit more routine and yeah. can be offloaded. So um, it's gonna be interesting to see how that space works out. I, I, I was wondering if it's getting to be like, are we balancing the workload, which is totally appropriate response. What I think to... is interesting is that they have never, never touched what the implementation is going to be like. I just think that's, you know, we're all here in this uh, trial testing period, right? That's what's going to happen. But nobody touches, nobody talks about because that's, you know, whether other people are going to come in and help, you know, like uh, they have the support right, is the support offices that used to do the fingerprinting. And well, and they used to do third party to do people testing, to yeah. do background checks. And that was a real, that was an epic failure. Ah, okay. So yeah, it's going to be a real problem. So do that again. <laughs> yeah, okay. 
Yeah, even if USCIS had tripled the budget, I, I don't think they try. People want them to be all things to all people, but they can't be all things to all people. So, um, any, uh, Peg, do you have any uh, final thoughts? No, not at all. But thank you, Jennifer. I, I only just echo what you say, you know, mm -hmm. it's really getting them, giving them opportunities to be able to speak. Um, because I think conversation is one of the most challenging areas of any language, at, because it's Absolutely. live. And Absolutely. even though, for example, this is reported, but what you said exactly five minutes ago, you can't remember off the top of your head. It, you know, no one can. And for <laughs> our for our students, it's that's what makes speaking so difficult. Um, and how many of them say, I just want to understand more. Um, and without slowing our speech naturally down, as if we're teaching in the classroom to maintain a regular cadence of speech, as will be expected from them at that citizenship exactly. interview. And, and anytime somebody walks in the door, how are you today? I'm fine. Thank you tell me more. It's, it's just automatically to try to get them to open up a little bit, tell me more about yourself. And I always underscore when we're working with uh, students for whom citizenship is imminent, that from the minute they walk in the door, if there is a naturalization personnel who says, how are you today? And you say, today is Saturday, March 4th, you might as well just keep walking right back out the door. Or did you have a lot of traffic getting here today? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I mean, they're they're absurd examples, but you know, if you don't give uh, an answer that is somewhere in that universe ballpark, of yeah. an acceptable response, you will not pass. And it doesn't just happen that citizenship exam is not just at the interview. It goes from the minute anybody is talking to you when you walk in that building. And that's one of the things like, I love YouTube and I hate YouTube. I love YouTube because it basically gives you some good models. I hate YouTube because people get the misconception if I just do this one, memorize this one video, I'll be fine. And that's not uh, appropriate. But I wanna go back to something you did say a minute ago about getting speaking, uh, uh, one of your initial comments about speaking. Initially, what I thought you were gonna talk about is how organizations can speak on behalf for us. I don't know why I thought that, but that's where my head went. So one of the things that I uh, have really felt, uh, thought is that COEB has been really good at speaking on behalf of communities, adult education communities that don't necessarily have a voice. For instance, with corrections, people with uh, with a, adults, basic skills, those kind of things. I think COEB has really been really good at that. I think links is basically bringing this information because not only we have a place to talk about this kind of stuff and talk about government policies, but also government people come and meet us there at that same thing. So it's almost a level playing sphere. So it's a way for us to safely talk, not talk back, but speak together as a community. I think TESOL is really good, uh, can be really good for that. So, and I really appreciate TESOL's uh, uh, stepping up and talking about things about related to naturalizations. So I think if we basically keep on participating in our, our, internet, our national organizations, I think it's going to be, we're going to be able to join voices together and basically speak, um, speaking truth to power. I mean, we had a great example of that with the, um, when they tried to revise the 2020, um, the 2020 revisions of the um, citizenship questions. And that was basically so many people spoke out against it and it did not, it was not implemented. So we need to bring, join together and speak on behalf of ourselves, our communities, our students, and get our, and basically help our students step up and speak for themselves in their community too, so.